Enter. Jim. Dragon. Kelly. He clobbers the mob as Black Belt Jones. From 1974, the classic kung fu film starring Jim Kelly as Black Belt Jones and a cast of other characters with names like Toppy, Big Tuna, Blue Eyes, Pinky, Marv the Butcher, and Jelly. Now what are you doing? No, 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 you stay here till I get back. Do those dishes or something. They're done. With clever dialogue and kick-ass fighting sequences, Black Belt Jones is probably the only film on the 50 worst list to be so bad, it's good. Oh, Black Belt, she is good, man. She is bad. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Would you like to go? Take a pair of socks and just stuff them in the, the silk panties, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, uh, just so it bulges. And the first film in the United States to receive an X rating, as well as one of the lamest movies to come out of the 1960s. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'd do just about anything for a boy in a uniform. Even though Greetings was directed by a young Brian De Palma and starred an even younger Robert De Niro. You've heard of pop art. Oh, yes, Well, this is called Peapark. This 1968 turkey still makes the 50 worst films of all time list at number 37. Uh, what am I doing here? I don't know. When an ancient jungle god becomes enraged that a tourist resort is being built on his sacred domain, he takes the form of a giant alligator, which later we find out is actually a crocodile, and seeks his bloody rampage of revenge on the people with state-of-the-art special effects. Gruna! Gruna! <gasps> Daniel! It's up to a photographer and the resort owner's foxy assistant to save the day. This is my most valuable assistant. Welcome. From 1979, The Great Alligator, which really should be called The Great Crocodile, but it's not. It's The Great Alligator. A nightmare of terror, a nightmare of horror. When country singers Merle Haggard, Sonny James, and Ferlin Husky encounter the villainous Lon Chaney Jr., John Carradine, and Basil Rathbone on their way to Nashville, a dubious hoedown of lame thrills and bogus chills ensues. Fear and fright. No! One of the cinema's largest mistakes Hillbillies in a haunted house. A jamboree of songs. A galaxy of stars. We're on our way to a swinging jamboree. Yeah. <laughs> you want it, lad? You got it, lad. If you were pleasantly surprised by Black Belt Jones, then you'll be pleasantly repulsed by TNT Jackson. Another gem from the 1970s karate black exploitation genre, TNT Jackson stars Playboy Playmate Jeannie Bell as a karate expert searching for her brother's killer on the mean streets of Hong Kong. But her journey introduces TNT to many villains, like the dreaded knife guy from the alley, and the two men afraid of a suitcase, and finally ends with the opposing afros both the good 
and the bad. With the swiftness of a deadly cosmic ray, the Earth is invaded by indestructible moon monsters. Their ghastly mission, death for all humans. Robot Monster is so atrociously bad that soon after its release, the movie's director, Phil Tucker, attempted to kill himself with a gun. He missed. Mankind. Robot Monster brings you an actual preview of the devastating forces of our future. Unsuspected revelations of incredible horrors that will terrify you with their brutal reality. Released in 1953 in 3D, Robot Monster utilized not only the terror and fright instilled by bubble machines, but also the macabre realism of an alien in a gorilla costume with a diver's helmet. There is no escape from me. Very well. I will recalculate. Your death will be indescribable. Fool humans, there is no escape. Hero astronaut Stephen West returns from outer space. His body is melting at an increasing rate. To survive, he must get human cells. He is the incredible melting man. Even though future Oscar winner Rick Baker designed the special effects for the incredible melting man, this 1977 gem still makes the 50 worst list at number 32. They're running out of everything but rules. Firebird 2015, when having a full tank of gas makes you fair game. This killing goes on. Accidents. Murders. In the not-too-distant future, the U.S. government outlaws all gas-burning vehicles, except for the gas-burning vehicles, which chase the other gas-burning vehicles in an attempt to stop them. Right, I am a burner. Shot entirely in the desert, where it's free, it's Firebird 2015 AD, a 1981 film where you can actually see the shame on the faces of the actors. I'm Firebird 2015 AD. Driving force for freedom. Firebird ain't right out yet. We're going to fly. They'll never shoot us down. Firebird 2015 AD. The two most feared villains in cinema history finally meet in 1971. Dracula versus Frankenstein. Throw in Lon Chaney Jr. in his last film appearance as an axe-wielding maniac, a Dracula with an afro, and a Frankenstein creature with a face that looks like a raw steak, and you're left with number 30 on the list of the worst films of all time, Dracula versus Frankenstein. Ed Wood is notoriously remembered as one of the worst directors in cinema history. Hello. Take the girl to my quarters. 1955's Bride of the Monster is one of the reasons why. Let me loose. Do you hear me? You will be soon to speak as a giant. Or like all the others. Bela Lugosi mumbled most of his lines throughout the film. Tor Johnson bumps into almost everything on the set. And the infamous fake octopus was actually stolen from the Republic Studios backlot. But they forgot to steal the motor. So they just wiggle it around. Yeah! 
From the festering bowels of the early 80s comes Smokey and the Bandit, Part 3. When Burt Reynolds decided not to reprise his role as the Bandit, the makers of this film originally shot it with Jackie Gleason, playing both the Sheriff and the Bandit, cleverly titling this gem, Smokey is the Bandit. As of this instant, Junior, we're in hot pursuit. <laughs> But when test audiences became confused and downright stupefied, parts of the movie were reshot with Jerry Reed playing the bandit. The release date was postponed, and the title was switched to Smokey and the Bandit, Part 3. Open your eyes and hear the magic. Imagine a stew with the ingredients of disco music, a Greek tragedy, a roller rink, Olivia Newton-John, and Gene Kelly. And the concoction you're left with is what one film critic simply declared, Xanadont. From 1980, Xanadu. With a budget of $20 million, Xanadu grossed barely half that back in its entire theatrical run, possibly because it played as a 99-cent double feature with the Village People's film, Can't Stop the Music. Xanadu, where time stops and the magic never ends. Xanadu, coming this summer. The president picked him, we need you, Leonard, to save the world. When a movie is bad, it receives a Razzie Award, which is the equivalent of an Oscar for bad movies. When a movie is horribly bad, it receives two Razzie Awards. And when a movie is as terribly bad as Leonard Part 6, it gets three Razzie Awards, and its producer and star Bill Cosby goes on several talk shows at its release and denounces the film as truly dreadful, advising people not to see it. That's how bad it is. At number 26, it's Leonard Part 6.